Welcome to Unfiltered Hummingbird. I am your host, Camelia. Hey, we're going to unpack some questions, interview some guests, have a little fun together. Come on, let's get to it. To episode of the Yin Yang, maybe, maybe not. Um, I am your co-host, Jennifer from the Jennifer Experience, and I am here with Ah, and you are here with Camelia from Unfiltered Hummingbird. This is going to be a great collaboration, y'all. All right, Jennifer, come on. Let's see what you I, got. I, what I what are we talking gonna, about? Wait, wait. I hope it's going to be a great collaboration, <laughs> y'all. I hope. Listen, listen. To everyone that's listening, I, I, I really want this to be a good, good, good thing for all of you. You've sent me questions, um, and I've had them sitting in my DM box for a while. So the intent is I'm going to answer some of your questions. Uh, we're going to talk about some current events, um, you know, some things that we've noticed happening. Um, and But overall, we, we want to have a really good time and hope that you get something out of this that helps you in your everyday life. So that's why we're here. That we're going to get started. So what I want to put on the table, the round table for us to talk about today. Uh, there's a show on Netflix called Ultimatum. Ultimatum. Mm-hmm. And there's actually a queer version and there's a heterosexual version. So there's a version for everyone. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely, I encourage you to go watch. Um, I obviously, being queer, have watched the queer version, but I've watched the heterosexual version too. But I watched all of the queer version, of every single last episode. Um, and I had a lot of takeaways, uh, a lot of pros and cons. Um, uh, Shout out to all the cast and crew. Um, I think, Mm -hmm. you know, definitely brave, brave, brave people. Brave. Yes. Anytime you're willing to go on national TV. Put your life on. Yes. Blast. Yes. Yes. Put Uh, your insecurities on. Yes. Yes. I I definitely think you're brave. Definitely think you're brave. but I, I want to know, Miss um, Hummingbird, what you think? What you, <laughs> what? Because I, because I told you to look at the show, so I, I wanted to know, like, what, what was your initial reaction? Hmm. Other than what? Other than what am I looking at? Exactly. <laughs> My first thing was, what in the? What am I looking at? Ultimatum. So the first thing I think about ultimatum. Ah, okay. So somebody is wanting an answer from somebody. So. Initially, just the topic in the first trailer, I'm like, I don't really do reality shows. However, I did like this one because it's just true things that happen in a relationship. Now, I have some, I have my own opinions about putting your partner in a situation where you can date other people just to see if I'm the right one. Yeah, that's not that's not my type of tea. I'm I'm too I'm too jealous. I prefer to have uh, uh, wait, mine wait, is mine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that please? I'm I'm just too jealous. I want my man, my man, mine. Oh mine. I don't I'm not sharing. Oh I'll share some food. <laughs> but I ain't sharing my Ooh. man. No way. Now, if he, if we make a decision where, you know, okay, you're not ready. I am. Okay. We make a decision that we're going to go our separate ways. That's fine. But it's not go your separate ways and go play around and then you come back. No, no, no. Right. So that's my viewpoint. And they tackled a lot of really real emotional, physical relationship issues. A lot of them. I mean, all of them. It was, huh, it was something. It was something. Well, now, okay. So let's let's start right there. Um, do you really think the purpose was to share your man? Because from from my perspective, an ultimatum was being given. Though it wasn't mm-hmm. like it wasn't like I'm bringing you here to share you. I'm bringing you here to say to you, listen. Since you heard out, 
after a certain amount of time, which obviously I have deemed it's been a, uh, the enough time to figure it out. Yeah, mine was the, the ones I show show um, was watching. There was two years they had been together for two years. Was that okay? Yours? Um, yeah, most of them okay. two years. Some of them, I mean, some of them were longer. Some of them were shorter. But the the oh, point okay. was is that you know, like at the end of the day, hey, I'm bringing you here because you're getting an ultimatum. You need mm-hmm. to make up your mind. So it wasn't like I, I I didn't take it as I'm bringing you here to mess around for a couple of days. I'm bringing you here so you can get your mind together and see that I'm the best thing for you. And you got a couple of days to figure that out or else I'm bouncing. So okay. how do you think that they came to that though? Well, the the tactic that they used. Well, I'm now let me be clear. I'm not agreeing with the tactic. No, I'm okay. just saying. I'm just saying that. <laughs> let me be very. very that's clear. why. That's why I. That let, was my viewpoint. Let, I was like, hey, let, well, let, let me I let me let, let me different be, ways to come let, to let, get let, to let, an ultimatum of what you want. I mean, really. Let let me let me let. So let me say this: as as a mental health professional, I would never recommend that you give an ultimatum when it comes to love. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I um, agree. Okay, not not when it. I would not recommend that, mm-hmm. and the reason I would not recommend that is because the whole principle of thinking that there is only one person in the world that is good for you or is that is matched for you is ludicrous. There is more than one person that would work for you. So if you test that theory, I am sure that you are going to find out that there that there is more than one person that you can be attracted to, that you're good with, that you can have a good time with, all of those things. Like there is more than one person that can work out for you. Thinking that like only one person in the world is meant for you and that sending your partner out to sleep with other people or even spend time with other people and that's going to make them like feel like oh that tactic i just think would never ever 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 work like i just i i just i mean think of it from this perspective if there was only one person that was meant to be your true soulmate what 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 would happen if that person died when they were a kid mm-hmm. Then you mm-hmm. spend the rest. You your life is doomed from the beginning because you're never going to meet your soulmate. Well, so I so, agree that there's more than one person, but I think that in this particular, the episode that I was watching, that they wanted that particular person to be the only one. And in order, they signed up. They agreed to be on this show, and they were in this two month span, right? Two months. So three weeks when you pick somebody, first you date other people or you see other people then you got two weeks when you go live with them and then you then you go back after spending three weeks with some stranger and going back to the person that you originally came to the show with and then you make a decision so i think that there's a different way that you can come across it. you could find out what the ultimatum is love is something that it's an action word right some people say you can't choose who you fall in love with i it's a choice. It, love is a choice. And then that 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 vow of marriage is something sacred. So you then that becomes a covering that you have where love inside the bounds of a marriage, it's love is a choice. You make a choice that I'm gonna love you, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. And then you work toward that piece of getting to know each other and, and liking one another, because liking somebody makes a difference. These couples went through emotional, physical relationships. They experienced, they showed and also experienced other people's flaws, shortcomings, jealousy, insecurity. It was so much emotion, to me, emotional baggage that all of these people experienced. And and it was for the world to see. Now, they could have easily signed up with Jennifer the Experience and had a one-on-one coaching and, and just say, hey, Let's just talk and 
work this thing out. <laughs> Shameless plug. Involved. Shameless plug. I mean, yeah, Shameless plug. I mean, but they could have. I mean, take this stuff personally because another part of this, Jennifer, is that they had the families involved. They went to the parents' house, the dad's job. I was like, oh, yeah, no. Uh, Cause my side of my family, oh yeah, we too. No, baby. They that, that would uh, not have worked. Family is something that, else. That, that, that family that would, would tear you that, up. That would not have worked with your family, ma'am. No, not, you know, know it wouldn't have worked. I, I know my your sister? family. Oh my god. That would not have oh. worked with your family. Oh, oh yeah, no, um, no, no, no. Yeah. Shout out to the family. But listen, yeah. um, <laughs> here what what i what i got was is that the person that was giving the ultimatum wanted to be the chosen one uh-huh. I, that they wanted to they wanted to know that their person was choosing them and when they say choosing them like you're choosing me for all the world to see you're choosing me to be your number one you're choosing me to marry me to make a commitment to me to make that vow and so I feel like I put in enough time, I put in enough effort, and I'm ready for the next step. And so either you're ready or you're not. Mm-hmm. It, it was all about wanting to be chosen. Now, the method that they chose to, 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 to get there, here's the thing. You shouldn't have to give somebody an ultimatum to choose mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's, the That's one of the families said that. It, if you have if you have if you have to give somebody an ultimatum to choose you, then did they really choose you? Mm-hmm. Or did you push them in a corner and they had to make a decision? Right. Because to me, that's not really choosing you. That's being forced to to say, okay, well, I'll take you because I don't want to lose you. Exactly. It's almost like um, I think a lot of people have a very, very uh, inappropriate view when it comes to compromise in relationships. And when I say that, this is what I mean. I, and I saw this on a, on a show. I'm not going to even say what the show is because some of y'all do not like this show, but it's, it's the truth. I saw this on the show. No, I did. Compromise is not meaning I am going to go without something that I need because I love you in order to keep our relationship functioning. That is not what compromise is. Compromise is something like, listen, I like decaffeinated coffee and you like regular black coffee. So because I know we like both, I'm going to make both. Instead of Mm -hmm. just making one, so one of us doesn't have to go without. That's Mm -hmm. compromising or compromising is you don't like spaghetti. And I know you don't like spaghetti, even Mm -hmm. though I love spaghetti. So because I know you don't like it, we won't necessarily go to the restaurant tonight to go get that. We'll go get something else. And on another night, we'll go get what I want. That's compromising. Too many times people go without something that they need and then in turn later on resentment builds because a need is not being met mm-hmm. and then you call that compromise and then you're mad at the person because you chose to go without a need being met and and after a while it's like if the person is not going to meet the need they're not going to meet the need they're not going to be somebody that they're not yeah that's really good that's really good about the compromise because then there's unmet expectations and there's also you feel the resentment I saw comes when you're not being considerate of the other person. So compromise, even though on a lot of the episodes, a lot of couples, a few of the couples that I saw on the show when I watched it, they were willing to compromise. But they had compromised within that two-year time period so long, so that's long to them, where they got fed up. And that's where the ultimatum came from. Look, I'm tired of having this unmet expectation that I have. When I, when I date, I date to marry. That's a lot of what I heard during these couples. I date to marry. The woman might say that or the man might say that. And then... The other person doesn't feel that way at all. I'm dating just to 
have life, do life with you. I enjoy your company. And if it happens, okay. But if it doesn't, I'm fine with that too. If babies don't come, I'm fine with that too. But those were things that they either said to the other partner and the other partner just disregarded it, which is another way of having an unmet need. Or they said it and the other partner said, you know what, I'm going to do that. And therefore they say, either you're going to do it or not. But is that love? Question. All right, guys, we have to cut it short, but we're going to hear the second part on August 31st. So tune in and you can hear the second part of Jennifer and Camelia's conversation about the ultimatum Netflix show here on our episodes of Ying and Yang. Maybe, maybe not. And we want you to share your comments. Let us know what you think. Send any questions to the Jennifer experience at gmail.com and she Jennifer will get back to you. You can always find me at www.thejenniferexperience.com. Um, I'm on social media everywhere under the Jennifer experience. Um, let me see what else we do have some events coming up that. All I right. We'll share those. Yeah. Yes. So we have a uh, Well You Fest that is coming up next month in Houston on September 22nd and 23rd. So be looking on my social media platforms and my website for uh, the speakers because we have a lot of good speakers coming up. We have financial, fitness, plant-based medicines, uh, mental health, uh, entrepreneurs especially. This is if if you are an entrepreneur and you need some tips, this is this is gonna be good for you as well. Um let me see what else are we doing. Also we're gonna have a singles mixer, very classy affair for those that are 50 and over that are looking to meet you a sweetie. Come on down. It's gonna be gonna be some good stuff. So be looking on my social it that's also during that time going to be September 22nd that evening. Uh, So look on my social media platform and you will see the information for that. Um, Also hotel booking information because it is going to be in Houston, Texas. Um, And I think that's all I have going on right now. All right. That's all we have for today. Join me next time on Unfiltered Hummingbird. I am your host, Camelia. Until then, have a blessed day.